the context for this forgiveness process, it's using the Buddhist teachings on the nature of attachment and how to unhook ourselves from it, but it's using the format um, from the unconditional love and forgiveness process that was composed by Edith Stauffer in the 70s and 80s. She, um, you know, some of you will recognize phrasings um, from people like Elizabeth Kubler-Ross and people um, who were really working on unconditional love back in those days. Um, so it's a hybrid practice using some Western psychology, but the basis is the Buddhist idea of overcoming attachment. So it's been rephrased. Um, I was taught this process by one of Edith Stauffer's students, um, and she's a Buddhist nun now and very cool person, Tenzin Chodron. She's in Australia. She works at Karuna Hospice, um, and she leads big, huge courses on this, which are really interesting and really useful. So the process is um, laid out in nice, tidy steps which are available on um, the Shanti Deva Center website in the link that um, Sheila put up earlier. And um, I'll put it up on the screen while we do it, but I'll walk you through it. So you don't have to read it on the screen if you'd rather just close your eyes. Um, but for some people who are more visual, um, I'll put it on the screen so you can kind of keep track of where we're up to. This process works very well also as a journal exercise. So kind of the basic premise is that you're first just naming baldly and honestly the harm that was done and what you feel. Trying not to edit it, trying not to, you know, give too much of, I shouldn't feel this way or I should feel that this way. Just here's how I feel. <laughs> yeah. And then you're going to just consciously reframe everything into, I would have preferred that you blah, 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 but you didn't do that. So I release you from that expectation. So it's kind of again and again, giving you your power back. So for example, if you are thinking about someone who's very critical and says a lot of harsh things to you and who is very rude, you would say, I would have preferred that you had spoken to me with respect, but you didn't do that. So I release you from that expectation. So you're always framing it in the positive because that is a very useful psychological tool to help unhook you from the story. So you wouldn't say, I would have preferred that you hadn't criticized me. You don't frame it that way. Frame it as, I would have preferred that you had spoken to me with respect. Does that make sense? So I'll walk you through it, but um, that's the kind of framing that you're going to want to get into your head because that's what will really help you kind of unhook from your attachment story, which is leading to so much grief and aversion. Okay. So we'll start with um, reviving the motivation, and we'll use this Four Immeasurable Thoughts prayer from the Medicine Buddha Puja. So just again, finding a comfortable posture, stably grounded. And think to yourself, all sentient beings, although self, and all appearances are dhamma dhatu by nature. They're empty of inherent existence. Have not realized it thus. I shall endow with happiness and the causes of happiness. I shall separate from suffering and the causes of suffering. And I shall make inseparable from happiness without suffering. And I shall set in equanimity the cause of well being free from attachment, aversion, and partiality. And so reinforce that motivation, thinking, may this process of deep healing, may it be of benefit not only for yourself and the person you are forgiving, but also may it be of benefit to all living beings. And if you have a strong connection with the Buddhist tradition, increase that into bodhicitta. May we become enlightened for the benefit of all sentient beings.
And so now imagine the person you wish to forgive is sitting opposite you. Allow yourself to imagine a clear picture of how they are looking, what clothes they are wearing, the expression on their face. If it feels better, you can place them at a distance that feels safe and comfortable, but really imagine the appearance of them, their body posture, the sort of clothes that they liked. And now imagine that you're speaking directly to the person out loud as if they are there. Tell them why you need to forgive them and what it's been like for you since this event or hurtful experience has happened. Try to be honest, allow your feelings to emerge, allow yourself to say whatever you want to say to them don't hold back or edit. Simply express how you've been hurt and how you feel about it. If you need to express tears, let yourself, let the words and feelings come out honestly. If you feel frustrated, tell them. If you feel outraged, tell them. If you feel hurt or betrayed, tell them. Do this as you need and say everything you need to say. Let the emotional burden you've been carrying about all of this be released in some way. Say the things.
and give this about two more minutes. Really say everything that needs to be said. Now's the time. And now speak to them again, but this time say what you would have preferred. With each preference you list, recognize that your preference carried with it an expectation that was not fulfilled. It is the expectation that needs to be canceled in order for the forgiveness to happen. It's the key to letting go. So cancel the expectation each time you say a preference. Start each time with, I would have preferred that, and then finish with, but you didn't do that, so I cancel that expectation. For example, I would have preferred that you had accepted me as I am, but you didn't do that, so I cancel that expectation. So spend some time going through each one of those preferences, acknowledging that it didn't happen, canceling them one by one. If you prefer, you can write this and then strike through the preference. Or just in your mind's eye, have this conversation directly and bravely.
It might be that with some of your preferences, you need to repeat them a few times, acknowledging them, seeing that it didn't happen, canceling those expectations. You might need to do the same one a couple of times to feel any sense of release. So just go at a pace that feels useful and connecting to you. Remembering it's important that your preferences be said in a positive, not a negative way. For example, I would have preferred that you had been honest with me, not I would have preferred that you hadn't lied. Be mindful of this, and if you say the preference in a negative way, restate it in a positive way. Each time you say your preference, cancel the expectation. State each preference and cancel each expectation individually.
and give that one more minute. And now think that you say to the person, I would have preferred that you had done all of these things, but you didn't do any of them. So I cancel all of these expectations I've been holding of you. And I give you full responsibility for all of your actions, all of your words, all of your feelings, I give you full responsibility for your life and how you lived it. And I take full responsibility for all of my actions, all of my words, all of my feelings. I take full responsibility for my life and how I live it. Imagine separating yourself from the burden of carrying what is theirs with you or the burden of carrying your own expectations. Let them dissolve. Just really be with that. I give you full responsibility. I take full responsibility. Even though there is infinite interconnection, even though everything is dependent arising, in a conventional relative sense, there is what is yours and there is what is mine. We each have responsibility for our own lives. So use that sort of thinking to let go of any kind of codependence or enmeshment or anything health unhealthy about your bond or connection to them. And now imagine a beautiful radiant light just above your head. 
Imagine it symbolically represents pure compassion, unconditional love, pure wisdom, kindness, understanding. And if you wish, in the center of this light, you can put the Buddha or Buddha Vajrasattva. Feel the presence of this unbiased, perfected compassion and wisdom above your crown. And imagine from this light above your head, rays of light come down into your body, slowly filling your whole body with this light. Imagine it reaches all the hurt within, dissolving the pain, filling you with light and healing. Imagine this light flowing into you awakens a deep sense of peace a deep sense of understanding, a deep sense of compassion and love, patience and wisdom. Imagine you are completely filled with this light and all of these qualities are awakened within you. Now imagine sending this light to the person You can imagine sending it from yourself, or if you prefer, you can imagine it radiating from the light above your own head, whichever feels more comfortable and genuine. Imagine the light surrounding them and filling them, dissolving the pain and negative emotions within them. bringing healing to them. Imagine they are receiving this light and unconditional love and it fills them completely. Think that you say to them, I send this light and unconditional love to you as you are now and as you have been. And I release you to your own highest good or your Buddha potential. And when you feel ready, tell the person something you appreciate about them or appreciate about the relationship between you or something that you've learned through the relationship.
and picture them once again. Notice how they are looking, what their face looks like. Notice how you are feeling within yourself now. Think that the light above your own crown that's been radiating to both you and them dissolves and absorbs into both of you, blessing your body, speech, and mind. And dedicate any merit from this process that may we continue to express unconditional love, compassion, and forgiveness in all of our relationships with others, and that all beings may be free of suffering and may find ultimate happiness. And you can relax your attention. Okay. So, um, you know, take care of yourself after a session like this. Um, make sure you're eating properly and sleeping properly and all that kind of thing. Um, this can be something useful to do more than once with certain people. Um, it could be useful with just one issue or a whole series of issues, depending on where your head's at. Um, I've found it useful in the past to kind of write it out, like, I preferred this and I preferred that and I preferred that and I just kind of sit with it and look at it and then one by one and I cancel that expectation and I cancel that expectation and I cancel that expectation. Sometimes having a tactile association can make it useful. Um, really depends on what works for you. Um, but this idea of kind of giving them back responsibility for their actions and their motivations and their choices, you taking back responsibility for yours. Normally we wouldn't say cultivate separation, right? In Buddhism, normally we would say embrace interdependence, acknowledge interdependence. But in this case, it can kind of help untangle false feelings of what you actually don't have control over and what you do. You know, it can kind of be empowering for you and then release codependence towards them. Because sometimes we really feel very invested in changing the emotional response of other people. And that's, that's not our job. And we can really exhaust ourselves trying to. So how did it go? Were you able to touch some, some experience or did you find some resistance? How are you doing? I, I didn't get very far. I had to keep rephrasing until I could craft it po in a positive way and then let the cancellation. So I only, I, I, I had to just keep working with a couple of things, but um, with regard to the, the feeling of separation that you referred to, what I found very interesting at the end is I just felt like I was holding the forearms of this person and, and she was holding mine. And as you said, as we ended, I felt myself let go of her forearms. And I was surprised by that because of exactly why you said, I thought that the light would bring us this sense of interdependence. And instead I just felt this, I guess, the attachment letting go. And that was, 
I was surprised to feel that because I felt I'd had to work so hard at the exercise of phrasing things positively and canceling that I thought, oh, I don't think I made any progress here. <laughs> but then I felt the release. I'm glad. Yeah, it is a bit of mental gymnastics, isn't it? We're so used to saying, I wish you hadn't and you hadn't and you hadn't. And to make yourself say, no, here's what I wanted. It can almost be a little cringy. Like, is it okay to say that? Oh, how embarrassing. What I'm saying is I wish you had spoken to me with respect <laughs> rather than I wish you hadn't been so critical. You're so mean. You're so harsh. It's like, no, I wish you had spoken to me with respect. And then you think, oh, do I really need that? Oh my gosh, how much pride do I have? What's my problem? And you know, you can sort of, it can be an interesting mental gymnastics to frame things in the positive, but it ultimately really helps the release because you see what is yours and what is theirs. And you don't, in any part of this process, you don't have to say harmful behavior is good behavior or okay. You're it's about empowering yourself to let go of enmeshment and attachment, which ultimately will bring things closer and more connected, but in a healthy way, rather than in this kind of tangled emotional mess. Other, other thoughts? It's okay if it didn't work for you too. There's a lot of different strategies, um, but uh, I'm curious, how did it go? So during the process of releasing the expectations, I, I noticed this fear arising of, of maybe also releasing the value, like not, not holding certain things as, as a value in, you know, or, or as an aspiration. And uh, so I felt some conflict and like a need to kind of like sharpen my scalpel a little bit more, a um, little bit more nuance. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. And, it, you know, it's, it's also the first pass through a process, you know, and you can refine it and personalize it to you if it's a if it's a useful one. I um, sometimes conversationally, even with friends, I use this with a couple of my friends who will say, what was your what would you have preferred? <laughs> you know, if I'm like grumbling about something, you know, you know, whatever. And what would you have preferred happened? I'd say, well, I would have preferred this and this and this, of course. And they're like, Sure, of course, but um, humans, <laughs> you're expecting people to be reliable and consistent and polite. Really? You're expecting that from people? <laughs> it's a bonus when that happens, right? That's amazing when that happens, but why would we expect it, <laughs> right? Uh, it's remarkable how kind we are to each other, given how much self-cherishing and self-grasping we have. It's really like a miracle how nice we wind up being, <laughs> despite of all our mess. Yeah. Yeah, what other stuff came up? Anybody choose a political figure or a, oh yeah, sorry, go on, Sheila, yeah. <laughs> um, I didn't choose a political figure, I chose a family member, but um, I found in um, releasing them, um, made me feel like I was giving up. Mm. And that made me very sick. Giving up on what? On them, on mm. you know, just letting go of all this stuff that I would prefer. Yeah. That was, was there a part of you that felt like you should continue to hold them accountable or something or was it just kind of a res um, resignation feeling like they're really not going to change anytime soon or what do you yeah, think that more was of about a resignation yeah, yeah. So holding out hope all this time and having to work this exercise of giving it up you know that kind of resignation yeah it seems that yeah, it, it can be so poignant, you know, so poignant, just to kind of, right, there's what I expected, and then there's what is. <laughs> there's what I had hoped, and there's what is, yeah. So it is, it is a bit poignant, it is, and I think at the other end of that kind of melancholy or that kind of sadness that, that we touch into also is a freedom, too, you know, because that, that hope or that expectation takes up a lot of background energy, you know, like you've got too many windows open on your computer and it's eating all the memory you know and you're like why is it going so slowly you know there's all these background tasks happening I need to close a few windows you know yeah yeah other other thoughts I feel like I'll be closer to this person now mm -hmm. I think okay. it yeah I think it takes that amount of detail and care and time to analyze Thing to create a space I'm not wording that right but j just the detail of it I think I, I, I just can't wait to cuddle this person <laughs> um 
So, uh, yeah, that's very helpful. Thank you. Yeah, I, I like it. I, I think the first few times I did it, I had a lot of resistance, like life's not that simple. <laughs> or, you know, I had a lot of, I don't know, I'm kind of a cynical by nature sort of a person. So I had a little bit of that. But um, after a while, I, I was realizing that it was, it was just such a useful way of naming what is mine and what is theirs, even though it's all mm. interdependent, mm. you know, and that was very empowering and enriching and just freed up a lot of mental space and energy. And I noticed at the beginning that I, it was so potent, the feelings that I went into that place that I've never normally have this. I've, I've witnessed other people have it where I sort of felt like I didn't care. Mm. Like, yeah. like, I can't be bothered. I got really tired, really sort of like bored. I was like, ah, it's because it's so enormous. So I had to, I forced myself to squeeze into the feeling of it. <laughs> you know, so I, I felt like I went on a bit of a journey. Um, which is interesting because I normally sort of, if, if in doubt, feel too much, not less. So that was, I thought, oh, interesting that I experienced that too, that sort of shut down, that cold, steely, not bothered thing. Mm. Um, but riding through that, yeah, it opened out. So thank you. Yeah. 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 Any, anybody else, any um, kind of interesting aha moments or pieces of resistance or just kind of questioning the process at all? I just found it so um, helpful to reinforce because, you know, earlier we had spent so much time thinking about attachment and expectations, at least for me, that are wrapped up in attachment. And then in this one, you know, to repeat again, this is my preference and I let go of this expectation. And I, it just like made it so much more, um, you know, made me conscious of how much expectations I have and how unrealistic it is. And that, you know, I'm looking for refuge in all the wrong places. Yeah. And to let go of that because it's it's not possible like you said you know how can how can someone always be nice and kind to me that's that's just not possible because i'm not like that yeah yeah and you know and i guess it's worth mentioning that you can also do this process for yourself and your past mistakes that's okay too um to say to yourself i would have preferred that i had more wisdom than i have now is a tricky thing to say to yourself you know, I would have, I would have preferred that at 20, I was 30 and at 30, I was 40, <laughs> you know, and it's like, you know, that's a hard thing to say to yourself. But, but what you're really trying to say is I had, I had an expectation of myself that wasn't reasonable of who I was then. And I can't kind of hold myself up to a standard I have now to the person I was then, you know, you're, you're assuming that they're the same person and there's been all these series of events between then and now hindsight 2020 yada yada but to say I would have preferred that I had been more careful about dot 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 or I would have preferred that I understood about dot 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 it's okay to say but you have to make sure you release the expectation and cancel the expectation of yourself because you're different now and thank goodness right <laughs> Thank goodness. And in a way, releasing it can kind of give the lesson back to yourself without the pain of it. You know, it's like filtration system, you know, you kind of like send it out and then bring it back all tidy. And, you know, now it's a pathway for empathy and affinity, whereas before it was a place of shame and defensiveness, you know, or whatever. Yeah. I also loved your ending, you know, with the light. It was so pretty. <laughs> That's a um, Edith Stauffer slash Venerable Tenzin Children edition, but it, it works because it, you know, if you think about like Vajrasattva practice, traditionally speaking, there are these elements there. They're just framed in the Buddhist framework. And I think sometimes if we can bring a framework that's more conversational to the way we speak in daily life together with the wisdom of those practices, sometimes it can really hit home. Um, I think we have to acknowledge that we use words very differently in everyday life than we do in Buddhism. Like the word shame, you know, like the word regret, like the word embarrassment. These words have very different meanings colloquially and in Buddhism. And so to kind of marry up the two forms of wisdom into one moment um, takes a lot of just kind of thinking, <laughs> you know, it's not like we have to give up one in favor of the other. 
Buddhism's like heightened common sense. <laughs> right. So um, any, any kind of final questions or thoughts, um, oh. pieces about the things that you wanted to ask? Yeah, go ahead, Venerable. Oh, I just wanted to say, um, well, I had to be away for part of the workshop today. I, I'm so grateful I was here for this forgiveness piece I found it very powerful and I did do it with regard to myself. And um, uh, for all the therapy I may have been in, in my life, it, to, to put it in the framework of, you know, I, I would have preferred, it, it, was, it was great to have to keep it really simple. It was, um, and it, but it gave me a whole other level of being with, you know, what I have worked on in, in, in other ways, but this, I found this very powerful and I'm so glad this is recorded because I, I think I'll want to do a bunch more of it. Yeah. I'm glad. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm glad. Very and, powerful. you know, it's, and, you know, everything you did before isn't lost, you know, it kind of helps to, to bring all your past structures and processes into a simpler format. Cause it's, um, another way to integrate I think so yeah. yeah I hear I hear people say sometimes oh I wasted so much time in therapy when I could have just done Buddhism and I'm like no no go to therapy please <laughs> please everyone <laughs> it doesn't even matter you had an easy happy life go anyway <laughs> you know because sometimes uh, when we meet the Dharma we have a harshness with it um, that is not intended and Tibetans don't necessarily have the same um feeling about it but because of us and the way we're brought up we we hear it in a funny way and we can distort the dharma into ways that are a lot more harsh than what is intended because in buddhism we don't identify with our mistakes or our negative states of mind we simply take responsibility for them and that distinction is so easy to forget yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so um, looks like there's some uh, links in the chat for folks that are interested about donations and upcoming events. Looks like Yangzi Rinpoche is going to teach. He's the coolest ever. Go see him. And um, um, was there any kind of final, even randoms, random questions before we dedicate? Did you have any hanging doubts or issues? Because we've got we've got a couple minutes just in I case. Have a, I have yeah, a quick question. I, I really loved the practice, um, but I felt a little discouraged by it because there are certain situations in my life where I feel like I'm done dealing with this. And then I feel like all of this pain came up regarding the loss of this particular friendship. So even while I was able to do the the practice and do the the letting go to, on some level, I still felt a lot of pain over the what happened, you know? So yeah, it, it well, seems, yeah. seems like sometimes I feel like, when is it going to end? I mean, all these layers, all these layers keep coming up, but it was a great practice. Thank you. Yeah, I'm glad. And I'm sorry, it was a ouch, but you know, a useful ouch, even if it's an ouch. It, and, you know, and I think we're all with you. It's there, there's so many, you know, old, old patterns in our life and family stuff and whatever, where it's just like, Oh, you know, <laughs> and, and grief and just, why are we like this? Why do we hurt each other like this? Why do we keep doing this? You know, and uh, ignorance, <laughs> you know, and um, I guess the thing to kind of not shake it off, but just to kind of gently objective, gently detach, gently say to yourself is ignorance can end. And I might not be able to end their ignorance, but the fact that I have a strong karmic connection with them means that the degree to which I develop my mind is the degree to which I become a more powerful condition for them. And my practice does have a direct impact on these people in my immediate life. It's like, why do I need to be a Buddha if there's already countless Buddhas already? I need to be a Buddha for these people in my life who don't have a strong connection with all those other Buddhas, but they have a connection with me, you know? So if I kind of work on my own stuff, it's not directly benefiting them in an obvious way, but it really is in these subtle ways. And you start to see stuff open up between people as the result of just your work. It's like you're giving space for things that didn't have air before or something. 
So I guess don't ever underestimate the power of your own work, even if they don't seem to be working on themselves <laughs> and maybe they're not gonna work on themselves. You working on yourself still does help them, at least cosmically, at least next time you bump into each other, next life, it won't be so rough, you know? <laughs> Cause if you're this close now, you'll be that close again, probably. So might as well work it out now. Eek. Yeah, Pamela. <laughs> This may be a little too complicated for the short time we have, but I just thought I'd ask, I do a lot of counseling for people at end of life and often they want help with forgiveness. And yet, so there's this, you know, intensity, obviously. And I just wondered if you had any advice about a way in which I might adapt this practice for that purpose. Yeah, I mean, it, it's used for that very purpose often um, where you can just kind of walk someone through it. So you can say, what would you like to say to them if they were here? Whether they're living or dead, whether things have changed or not, that pocket in time where the harm happened, let it out. What would you say to them? A bit like gestalt, you know, like chair work. Yeah. But, you know, you can, you can walk them through it and, and adjust it in that way. And that's, it can be really useful. Um, I mean, and often, you know, end of life, it's about self-forgiveness too. Often yeah. there's a lot of like old mistakes that weigh heavy on their heart. So if you can, you know, shift it to that perspective too. When, when we're guiding people through it, I think the, the most guidance is needed in the framing things in the positive. So you'll say, okay, what would you have preferred? And they'll say, you know, I wish they hadn't criticized me. And then you say, better to say, I would have preferred you spoke to me with kindness and respect, you know, and then let them say it. So it's, it's kind of nudging them into getting that framework of framing into the positive that usually folks need the best help with. The light, I usually um, adjust to suit their religious tradition. So if they're a non-religious nature lover, I just leave it as light that it represents and embodies compassion and wisdom. You know, if they're Buddhist, put a Buddha in the center of it. If they're Christian, put Mary or Jesus in the center of it. If they're whatever, you know, so you can adjust the light portion to suit what they need. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. And if you ever go to Australia, do one of Karuna Hospice's spiritual care with the dying retreats. They're great. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. All right. So um, we'll go ahead and dedicate. And um, we'll use Shanti Davis' prayer. May all beings everywhere, plagued by sufferings of body and mind, obtain an ocean of happiness and joy by virtue of my merits. May no living creature suffer, commit evil, or ever fall ill. May no one be afraid or belittled with a mind weighed down by depression. May the blind see forms and the deaf hear sounds. May those whose bodies are worn with toil be restored on finding repose. May the naked find clothing, the hungry find food. May the thirsty find water and delicious drinks. May the poor find wealth, those weak with sorrow find joy. May the forlorn find hope, constant happiness and prosperity. May there be timely rains and bountiful harvests. May all medicines be effective and wholesome prayers bear fruit. May all who are sick and ill quickly be freed from their ailments. Whatever diseases there are in the world, may they never occur again. May the frightened cease to be afraid and those bound be freed. May the powerless find power and may people think of benefiting each other. For as long as space remains, for as long as sentient beings remain, until then may I too remain to dispel the miseries of the world. The wish granting, wish fulfilling jewel, source of every single benefit and happiness in this world, the incomparably kind Supreme Tenzin Getso, may you have a long life and all your holy wishes be spontaneously fulfilled. You who uphold the subduer's moral way, who serve as the bountiful bearer of all, sustaining, preserving, and spreading Manjunath's victorious doctrine, who masterfully accomplish magnificent prayers honoring the three sublime ones. Savior of myself and others, your disciples, please, please live long. So thanks folks and uh, have a good rest of your weekend. <laughs>